Hey guys, my name's Nathan. I'm one of the aquarists here at the Two Oceans Aquarium. And today we're in the culture lab and I'm gonna be showing you a bit about it. Um, so just one thing to keep in mind before I do is this is a very temporary facility. We're busy with some construction here at the aquarium. And so some of the facilities have had to move, including the culture lab. So we're currently in one of our kitchens and that's just gonna be for a temporary amount of time until we, until we move back. So what the culture lab is and what we do here is essentially we culture different organisms. And what that means is we maintain standing populations of these animals. Um, so that includes basically growing them, keeping them, feeding them, and then using them as a food source. So that's the ultimate goal of the culture lab is to, to culture and to grow little organisms as a food source for our animals in the aquarium. So the culture lab is extremely important to us. They actually feed approximately 30% of our exhibits, which is quite a bit if you think about it. Um, and that's the target is mainly your smaller animals, mostly the invertebrates or those with smaller mouths that are then going to feed on these small organisms that we culture. What I'm going to be doing now is showing you how I culture these animals and how we grow them, how we maintain them. Um, and later on you'll be shown around the aquarium and see how they get fed to the other animals and how they take them in and how that whole process works. And the other aquarists will show you that process. This is bubbling contraption that we use to bubble our artemia eggs in. And so basically what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take the excess eggs which are on the pipe and I'm going to wash them off. And then we're going to transfer this over to the sink where we can hatch them out properly. Artemia are they're essentially little, little shrimp. They're also known as, as brine shrimp. So artemia is actually the genus name of the commonly called brine shrimp, um, which is what we hatch out and grow here. Um, they're also called sea monkeys, so they're, they're quite commonly found in aquariums and, and pet stores. So if you go to an aquarium and you see something advertised as a sea monkey, that, that's these guys. So you'll see during the hatching process they'll change color, i um, point it out to you, but right now they're very brown and you see it's almost granular, you can see in the top there. And then throughout the hatch they'll change color completely, because the brown that you're seeing that's the the cyst of the eggshell itself, it's the, the actual eggshell. And so what we do is I'll explain as we go. When they're born, the, the little norplia, that's what they're called, and they're approximately one millimeter in length. So those you can see, you can see them swimming about. Um, and then when they grow up to adults, approximately one centimeter in size. And there are differences between the male and female adults, um, which then breed. And in good conditions, they'll breed and produce a little small nuclei straight from the, the parents. Um, but in rough conditions, the, the spiral strategy is to breed cysts. So cysts are basically eggs. So it's a, it's a dormant, dormant otemia. And that's what we use here at the lab to culture out our norplia. So now I'm just using the water to wash off any of the eggs on the side and to get all, all the eggs up on the bottom as much as we can. We don't want to waste any eggs. Now we've got our eggs in our jug. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use bleach. We're going to put bleach into the jug and then we're going to mix it a bit until it's ready. And then we'll pour in our vinegar which is already prepped on the side here. And so the reason that we do this is the bleach, what it does is it reacts with the eggshells and it eats away at the cyst. And so what it, the, the goal is to basically speed up the process. And so instead of the, the baby artemia hatching out and having to push through the cysts, they will already be exposed and it's a lot easier for them to hatch out. So it's, it makes the process a lot quicker. Once the reaction's complete, we want it to stop, then we'll put the vinegar in and then neutralize it and it won't react further with the, with the eggs. So we're gonna throw some each Again, it's not a science, you just kind of judge how much. It's usually about 200 mils. And then we stir. So first just stirring it in, just so that it's making contact with all the eggs. And it'll take a little bit for the reaction to start. The foam forming on top is now the bleach reacting with the eggs. So as it starts to eat away at the, the cyst, the, the outside shell of the egg, and it forms this white foam on top. They are entirely safe here. So it's, you just have to be careful with how long you stir them for. If you do it for too long and the cyst breaks away and then you keep them in the bleach, then obviously it'll start reacting with the artemia themselves. So you just have to keep an eye on it and then judge when it's ready and then get rid of the bleach. And so now what we're doing is we're just gently stirring it, just getting the, the bleach in contact with all the cysts. The unfertilized and non-decapsulated eggs are the bright white or brown ones that you can see being reflected by the light. 
and we want as much of that eaten away as possible so we don't want it in the food at the end of the day so that's not ready so now from here we're going to pour it over into our sieve and the goal here is just dilute it get as much of the eggs out as we can we don't want to waste anything Yeah, we don't want to add our vinegar. So now we got all the fleece and vinegar off. And put it back into the tub. Now we'll just rinse it out. So there's still eggs, the capsules have just been removed. So that hard shell has been removed. Um, so now they still need to kind of hatch out into free swimming Artemia. So this is our green water and we use this as a food. So this is one of the, the things that we call to here. Um, the green water is basically, it's an algae or a phytoplankton. Um, so you naturally find it in the ocean just scattered throughout and we just grow it here in, in quite heavy concentrations. So basically every morning we're going to come and we're going to select from all the algae that we have and we're going to pick the darkest ones because that's obviously the most dense. Um, so we want to get our, the majority of our algae from one of these big 20 litre drums. So just looking at it quickly, it looks like this one's the darkest. So in nature, phytoplankton typically isn't found in this color or as dense as this. Um, it would be a lot more dispersed, a lot more dilute and spread out throughout the ocean, except for during upwelling events. So that's when nutrient rich water from the lower parts of the ocean come up to the surface through current movement and then it facilitates the, the intense growth of this algae. And that would be the only time you would really find um, your phytoplankton growing in such intense concentrations as what we have here. So the air is not only to aerate the water, but it also moves it. So it keeps everything suspended in the water. If you just let it settle, if you just leave it without the air, then all the eggs and things will settle on the side and they'll get stuck and they won't hatch out and might die. So um, what we're doing now, because we're wanting to harvest it, is we want to separate the, the hatched artemia from the unhatched ones. Now, that's that. Check my green water. And it gets different species, different types. So we have a, we have a monoculture at the moment, just a single species of algae which we grow and you'd basically collect them from the ocean and you would isolate them and then you can use that to inoculate a new culture. So then you would have a pure strain of that species of algae. Basically, how we, how we lay it out at the moment, because it's very temporary and we still have a lot to add, um, but we've got our green water sitting on the left here on the side, on the bench, because it's with the other green water and we are concerned about contamination. So just for the time being, we've got green water down here and then we've got all the things requiring air, so your artemia bubbling on top here. And so as we condense the different cultures, we'll then distribute them accordingly into these jugs. So these are all the jugs that are gonna to go to the exhibits um, to then feed the animals. So if you look closer at the, the jugs, you'll see that they're marked. They've got the exhibit name, they've got the type of feed that needs to be on it, they've got the animal that it's feeding, and then they're also marked with the levels that the aquarists want them on. Um, so we've also got them marked out on big boards, um, but just so that I can follow a bit easier, all the jugs are, are marked out as well. And so basically what I'm going to do is you want to start jugging out some of the green water and then spreading it out amongst the containers that need them. So like if you have stacks of corals, you're going to need more. Or if you have tube anemones that are only eating Artemia, they're going to want a lot more Artemia because that's the only source of food, for instance. If contaminants do get in the cultures, what often happens is they crash. And that basically means that that culture is no longer viable and it's, it's dying. And so how we see that in our green water cultures is either they lose color, they start quaming at the surface, um, or they go, yeah, as I say, completely see-through. And then we know that culture is dead, it's no longer viable, it's not going to get any darker, it's not going to grow anymore. And then we can actually crash that as well. 
which means emptying it out, cleaning it completely, sterilizing the container completely so that there's no contaminants in it anymore, and then restarting that culture with the previously running, running strain of algae. But now we've got a half drum of green water, and obviously that's no good to us. So we're gonna to wanna to retop that up, restock that. And so how we do that is we use just seawater, but it's, it's filtered and purified seawater. So we run it through some micron filters and then also through a UV filter, just so that any contaminants are killed. So that it's, the, it's very pure water when you put it in here. You can think of it as, as a plant. They photosynthesize like plants and they have the same requirements as plants. Um, but with these guys living in water, so, so they just need clean water. They're gonna need light like a plant and they're gonna need nutrients. And so that's what we give them. So when we split cultures, which basically means making a new culture from a previously grown one. So we use a dark culture and we make a new one. So basically halve it, put it into a new jug, fill it up so it's going to be more dilute. And then we're going to add nutrients to it and put it in a position where it has um, good lighting and a clean source of water. So it comes as a, a nutrient powder and we mix it with RO water, um, which is reverse osmosis water. It's very pure water, fresh water. And then from there, um, once it's mixed in the RO water, it's basically turns into a nutrient liquid. So it's filled with your, your NPKs, basically like nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, your, your nutrients that your plants need to grow. So it's very high in those nutrients. And then what we do is we use that as a food for your phytoplankton. So the artemia is busy settling, so we can come over and have a look. So this is the recently hatched up one. So I hatched this out yesterday. So from eggs straight into here. Um, and then from here, a day later, so 24 hours later, they moved across into here where they can grow out a little bit bigger. Um, and it also helps to separate the eggs, um, so it just makes it a bit of a cleaner hatch if you do it twice. And yeah, so these guys are ready for harvest, and we're going to harvest them today to feed. And you can see the artemia swimming on top, and then throughout the water column, and then the, the unhatched ones or the dead ones, they'll be sitting on the bottom. So if you look on the outside here, you can see like a bit of orange at the bottom, it's the same on that side. And then when we drain it, we always drain the dregs up, that's what we call the little bit at the bottom, the dead or the but unhatched and and then we're just going to siphon it if i siphon all the way to the bottom then i do get some unhatched eggs or dead artemia in the, in the hatch still because they kind of stick on the side and then as the water level drops they fall in and so what i often do is i tend to stop relatively close to the bottom and then i'll just drain the remainder of that water out as well so we're still going to use it we're just going to let it settle even more um, instead of just adding it to the bulk of the artemia because we don't want to waste so use as much as we can so yeah let's drain it out and then i'll also use a hose and just rinse out the edges so we can get as much of the artemia as possible so if there are still some living ones trapped on the sides and we get them too and then we just wash them out so obviously you're stuck all over the sieve so what we're going to do now is it's quite important that your jellyfish get as clean artemia as possible. And by that, I mean, when you hatch artemia, you often get unhatched eggs, um, which we kind of call a dirty batch. And the hatch could be filled with unhatched eggs or it could be filled with dead artemia. And the unhatched eggs, those, those egg shells, they're quite dangerous for jellyfish in particular. So when they try and eat them, they can't actually digest them. They get stuck in the tissue and then it, it can kill the, the jellyfish or it causes severe scarring. Um, and so with our hatches, when we do have eggs in it, just as a precautionary and to get the hatch a bit cleaner, is we, we separate the eggs even further, or the artemia even further. So that's what I'm doing now. I let them settle, let them all group up together, and then we siphon them out so it's a lot more concentrated. So if you want to see what I mean, I mean that compared to what's in here, this is a lot more concentrated artemia. So we drained all the, the rest of the artemia. So it's basically the, the dead artemia and the, the unhatched eggs. And so this is now a concentration of those unhatched eggs and, and dead artemia. But we don't want to waste artemia because within that there are still living artemia that we can use as food. So we're trying to preserve as much as possible. And so we're going to take from this and pour it over very carefully to try to get as much of the living artemia, which are going to be on top, and the dead artemia and the unhatched eggs, which are going to be on the bottom. But today's hatch isn't super dense. So we won't be softening again. Okay. And now we just distribute it amongst everybody that needs. But your artemia, they basically respire. And so if we leave them in these jugs for too long without air, then 
they will die, they'll suffocate. So that's why these ones in particular have got air feeding into them before the acarus come and fetch them as, as a feed. And then there's also some of your acarus that add other nutrition to the food. So like this, for example, goes to the pipefish. This is Kay's. And what she's done is she's put frozen mycid in as well. So this is a mixture within for her pipefish. And then it's a mixture of your green water, artemia, and your frozen mycid in as well. So now we're over at our rotifers. So these are two of the containers that we use to culture them in. We also got a bunch of containers behind me, one for each day of the week. And essentially what rotifers are, they're little microorganisms. They're very, very small. You can't see them with the naked eye. Um, if you do look at the water, it's just like slight dust in the water and that's them. So when it comes to rotifers, it's extremely easy to culture them as well. They multiply on their own. The only thing that we have to do is give them the space to do that and some food. So essentially what we do when we're starting a new culture is we just add some from a previous existing culture um, and that's basically your, your baseline. And then every day we just feed them a little bit of green water and that's what they feed on throughout the day. And then slowly throughout the week, that population will become more and more dense. And we have one bucket for each day of the week. Um, and that basically, we, once we start a new culture, we leave it for a week for it to become more dense for the, the road populations to expand. And then on that day in the week, we would harvest that population or that bucket. And what we do is we drain it into a sieve so that we can condense the population. And then we use that to then feed and distribute amongst the different buckets that are gonna go throughout the aquarium.